Hi, this is Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to keep working on story problems. Here's one. The U.S. Senate has 100 members. After a certain election, there are eight more Democrats than Republicans, with no other parties represented. How many members of each party were there in the Senate? The trick to doing this is to break this story problem down into its parts. First, there are a hundred members of, uh, uh, well, a hundred members in the U.S. Senate. I should have said Senate. Let's do that right now. Senate, because the Congress includes uh, the House of Representatives as well, and we're just talking about the Senate there. So there are a hundred members of the Senate. And we're assuming there are no independents and no Green Party and no, no, nothing else but Democrats and Republicans. Okay, those are the only two parties represented. And in this case, there are more Democrats, eight more than Republicans. And that's how we set it up. 100 members all together. And they're divided up into Democrats and Republicans. And there are more Democrats than Republicans. That's the whole idea. And we want to know how many of each, th each party there are. How many Democrats, how many Republicans. Okay. Where well, we're told in here that there are eight more Democrats than Republicans. So notice that the number of Democrats is based on the number of Republicans. Eight more than the number of Republicans. How many Republicans are there? I don't know. Ha ha. I am going to let x equal the number of Republicans. Well, if there are x Republicans in the Senate this particular year that we're talking about, and there are eight more Democrats than Republicans, there must be x plus 8. Democrats. And together, the Democrats, the Dems, let's call them the Dems, and the Reps equal 100. This is not that hard, is it? Now, just substitute. We're letting X equal the number of Republicans. We're letting X plus 8 equal the number of Democrats. And we know that the two add up to 100. Now all we have to do is solve this equation, which really doesn't look like the hardest equation in the world. And we got this just from breaking the story down into sentence by sentence. What are the main ideas? The main ideas there is there are 100 members that are divided up into Republicans and Democrats. How many of each are there? Okay, so that's really all the information we have. Now I'm going to add like terms. 1x plus 1x is 2x. So I'll have 8 plus 2x equals 100. And then the first thing I'm going to do is get the x term, the variable term by itself. This 8 is added on to it, so I'm going to add the opposite of 8 to both sides of the equation. 8 plus negative 8 is 0, leaving me with 2x. 100 plus negative 8 is 92. Now I have one variable term on the left, one constant term on the right. We call pure numbers constants. Let me move this now, move it up a little. 2 is multiplied by the x, and so to get rid of that 2 and just get x by itself, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. This will leave me with x on the left, and I've got to divide 2 into, oops, I've got my calculator. Why don't I use the calculator? I'm going to come over here and turn it on, and again, and say 92 divided by 2 
enter is 46. So x equals 46. Now, because it's a story problem, I have to look back at the original uh, uh, statement of what I let x equal. All right, x is the number of Republicans, so there are 46 Republicans. I'm going to fill out the answer box right here. There are 46 Republicans. If I were actually in my math lab, I would type 46 in the answer box. Okay, now, since the number of Democrats are x plus 8, I have to add 8 to 46. Since x is 46, this is going to be 46 plus 8, which is 54. So there are 54 Republicans, uh, uh, Democrats, 54 Democrats, 8 more Democrats than Republicans. Okay, and we have conquered this problem. It wasn't that hard. Not when you break it down. Okay, here's a different kind of story problem. It's a problem that you saw in pre-algebra, so you may not even remember it. We're going to go over it again. An insecticide contains 67 centigrams of inert ingredient. All right, inert means it doesn't do anything. It's just there to take up space. All right, so insecticide contains 67 centigrams of inert ingredients for every one centigram of active ingredient. That is the stuff that actually kills the insects. So um, you've got 67 centigrams of inert material right there. You've got one centigram of insecticide, so altogether you've got 68 centigrams. All right, now you've got more of the inert material than you did do of the ert material? No, no, active. Okay, the, those are supposed to be containers. They're not very convincing, are they? But together you've got 68. If you've got 67 inert and one pure, um, then you've got 68 altogether. So this, are the, this is the ratio of inert to active. Okay, now, somebody brings you 408 centigrams. All right, I didn't finish reading the problem, did I? Let's go back to the beginning. An insecticide contains 67 centigrams of in, inert ingredient for every one centigram of active ingredient. So we decided that in a, 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 a group of 68 centigrams, there are 67 inert and one active. All right, now, if a quantity of insecticide weighs 408 centigrams, how much of each type of ingredient does it contain? So knowing that you have this 67 to 1 ratio, somebody brings you 408, a container of 408 centigrams. And, and says, okay, um, how much, much, no, how much inert And how much, how much, uh, oh, I'm calling it pure, the active ingredient. There's always going to be less of the pure. The inert is put in with the pure to make it less strong. Okay, you want to be able to spread it around and kill a lot of insects. Um, okay, so what we have here is we have a total of 408 centigrams, and we have a total of 68 centigrams. We know how, whoops, yeah, okay, there we go. We have a total of 68 centigrams. Let me write that better. 
We know how this is divided up 67 to 1. We need to find out how this is divided up. So this is how we're going to do it. Um, it might be easier to find the pure stuff first. So, I know that one centigram out of the total 68 centigrams is pure ingredient over here. How much of the 408 centigrams is pure? So I set this up the same way. One pure to 68 total equals X pure to 408 total. There. Let me write it again. 1 over 68 equals X over 408. This is a proportion. Remember proportions from pre-algebra. Proportions are very easy to solve because all you have to do is cross multiply. Every time you have one fraction equals one fraction, you can actually, it ends up skip a step by cross multiplying. So I'm going to multiply 68 times x, and I'm going to let that equal 1 times 408. Then to solve for x, I'm going to divide by 68 and divide by 68 and use my trusty calculator over here. Turn it on. Clear it out. I want to know 408, 408 divided by 68. is 6. So x equals 6. I now know that 6 of these centigrams are pure material. How much is inert? Well, that would be 408 minus 6, right? Because if there are 408 centigrams altogether and six of them are the pure material, then the rest is all going to be inert. So the inert is going to be, um, uh, well, it doesn't matter, does it? Because look, that's not what they're asking for. All they're asking for is the centigrams of active ingredient. And we found that when we found x, when we found x right here. OK. So um, we are going to have 6 centigrams of the active ingredient. Now, how did we do this? We said, OK. I've got this, this uh, small batch of insecticide, 67 grams of it are inert, and one uh, centigrams of it are inert, and one centigram is active. Altogether, there are 68. Now, if somebody brings me a big clump of 408 centigrams of the same exact kind of insecticide, we're going to have the same ratio going on there of inert in ingredients to active ingredients. So what do I do? All right, since one centigram out of the 68 total centigrams is active, that same ratio is going to be true with the 408. So we set it up like, moving the sheet of paper again, set it up like this. One centigram out of 68 centigrams is pure. I don't know how many centigrams out of 408 is pure, and then I saved this. OK, found out x equals 6 centigrams. OK, I'll talk to you later.